Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today on Coffee Talk, all the way from Oslo? Yes. Oslo, Norway, is Erland Baki, the author of one of my favorite books. And it's not. I'm not just kissing up Erlen because you sent me a signed <laughs> copy of it. It really is a great book, and it really kind of discusses how to never work again. It's like, it's not just one of these highfalutin books. It's like, here's how to never work again. I love it. So we're having, a, <laughs> you know, let's have a cup of coffee together. What are you drinking? Uh, tea. Mm. Uh, I'm drinking um, Puka tea, cool mint green. Because I was in the Moroccan mood today. Nice. So are you and more a tea guy than a, than a coffee guy? It's awful, by the way. It looks like a grandma teacup. It, yeah. It re- I you need d- a cool one with like Mr. Outsource on it. You really do. Uh, yeah. yeah. See, I got the Land Geek one. I'll, I'll have to you say. Are that online? Of course. Everything's online. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So let's talk about the book, Never Work Again. Um. Why did you write it, and what was that like? I love the book. Why did I write it? Um, well, it was actually on my vision board for many years to write a book. Uh, it, it was at the at the time. I actually, have I still have it up here. Uh, it, it was called "Life of an Entrepreneur." Um, that was the title of the book before, and I was actually challenged by a a mentor um, who said like. Okay, it's time for you to write your book because that will position you as an expert uh, in outsourcing. It will be easier for you to get speaking gigs. It will grow your list. It will add to your credibility. Um, you know, authority, author, authority. Um, right. And and uh, in hindsight, I think like having a book is when you write a book, you should write it so that it, it like sells millions of copies. Um, that should be your goal. Uh, a lot of people say, that, oh, just write your book, you know, just like get it done. And it's like, yeah, maybe the first one, maybe the first one, you just want to get it done. Um, but the thing is, it's like real estate. Like once you have a book, like think about um, Getting Things Done by David Allen. Right. Um, that book has sold like, I don't know, more than 6 million copies or more. Yeah. 45 languages. Like he's constant. The people are constantly reading it, referring to it, using it watching his videos on YouTube and he's in the, every time somebody interacts with his brand, he becomes more brand, you know, brand worthy or, or, uh, more, uh, credible in terms of time management and stuff. And then he gets booked to speak at conferences where he gets paid, you know, $50,000, a hundred thousand dollars. So when you make a book, I think it should be really, really good. And, um, my next book, of course, I want to be even bigger than the one that never work again. Um, New York Times bestseller. Yeah, I, I want actually New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Amazon. Yes. Like, oh. yeah, and it, it needs to be like in that league um, just because it is time consuming. It, it is a big investment. Right. Uh, right. And when you do it, you should really like knock it out of the park. Right. I have a shortcut for you. Okay. Okay. So just call Oprah. And say, Oprah, I've got a great book. For your let's book have book. coffee. And let's have coffee. <laughs> and she'd be like, Erlen, of course. And it's all over. <laughs> and then, you know, that, that just happens. So I don't think anybody's ever done that before. But they should. Why not? You know, <laughs> she's, she's a person just like anybody else. Are you going to give me her, her number? Of course. Of course. Yeah, I can't do it on this. But the thing is, the funny thing is, I didn't even try to be on opera like I didn't even because like you know how you know if you never try you never never happens like those those who ask don't get right so it's kind of like that like I could say like yeah yeah like opera but like I should be in the state of mind where like oh part of my plan is to be on opera I I absolutely agree I mean I think you you should I think you should be absolutely unreasonable with your expectations with doing anything um yeah because it's just a numbers game. If you talk to a hundred influencers and just one of them says, Erland, I love it. Right. Mm. And Seth Godin anoints you the Mr. Outsource guy. Right. You know, it's over. <laughs> yeah. So, um, over, 
it's over. It's Erland blows up. It, it's all <laughs> over, right? So life changes overnight. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's like uh, so, one of those things. But I must say, like, writing a book, um, it's a very good process. Um, you know, it's like a, it's a project and you think about it all the time. You get ideas. Um, but it does take time and, and it is an investment. And uh, it, But it's fun. I recommend it. It's very sort of soul-searching. Right, right. And, and what I love about the the book and MrOutsource.com is the fact that we can always make more money, but we can't get yeah. more time. And this really kind of gets really granular. Like, here's all the things you can do and you should do and mm. can do to make your life better, to make your company more profitable, and to really get do the things you want to do in life and not be a slave to your, to your business. Like no entrepreneur goes into business thinking to themselves, you know what? I want to wait. I want to work 80 hours a week. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but that's a lot of that. Them, that's what happens, right? Yeah. 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 So, um, well, I, I think I talk a lot about goal setting in it as well. Um, because if, if your goal, if your goal is just more money, then yeah, of course you're always going to be working. But I think um, I think it's it's good to have like fun goals, right? Uh, and I think we need goals because I've I've tried the sort of just be happy today and just be grateful and just be like very zen about it. Um, and I mean it, that that feels pretty good. But I I believe as human beings we do need to like say okay I I did did X now I want Y. Um, because we need like these moving towards goals to right. kind of feel alive, to sort of feel like we're making progress. But the backside of that though, which is weird, is like once you've achieved certain goals and you know like, oh, okay, then you're like, okay, it feels good. But like you always ask yourself, what's next? Right, right. So right. You, never, you never like reach the goal. So it's always like process. Um, but I still think we need like process towards a goal for life to be fulfilling. But a lot of people will sacrifice everything for the goal to realize when they hit the goal that it wasn't what they thought it would be. Yeah. I, I, but, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's like pure, you know, um, it, it's, it's like this, this life, like we all know it, but no one really says it. Right. Like we all know deep in our in our in our psyche, like we know money's not going to make us happy, <laughs> right? And there's study after study. After like seventy five thousand dollars in the U.S., like your incremental happiness is like very small above yeah. that above that threshold, if any. If any. Yeah. So, you know, the ego drives it, and yeah. then you you know you're on your third wife and. You know, <laughs> your your children hate you, and yet, but you've got you know a big house and a big car, and, yeah. and people you look successful. Where I think you're right. Where you know the success really is number one, determining what's enough, how much is enough, and number two, you know, is doing my best every day enough, right? right. And, and and seeing that progress and going through that journey. And in making a life, I don't, I don't know. What do you think? I think there's like, um, I think there's like a small percentage. So when I got started in business, when I like seven, eight years ago, whenever it was, it had a lot to do with my insecurities, right? So like I, I was good at school. I was good at stuff, sports. And then I worked in a business and then I was fired and I was like, wow and that really like was a big um sort of brick in the head for my self-esteem and and then a lot of other things came up uh for my you know when i was growing up and then i was like oh i'm gonna start a business i'm gonna be a millionaire i'm gonna prove to people that i'm worth something right a lot of my initial a lot of my initial motivation came from like proving myself to other people right which right. again is like a, it's like more money it's like like an endless you can if you if you if you prove things to yourself, then that's a healthy thing. Like I'm going to prove to you that I'm going to go to the gym afterwards. 
right. I'm going to prove to myself that I'm going to meditate afterwards, right? That's like, and then that that's all about me, and it's like internalization of my goals, which has nothing to do with comparing myself to somebody else meditating, which is stupid anyway. Right. But right. Um, I, I feel like I'm losing my thread now. I'm going to have some tea. Sure, sure. Mm. Have some more coffee. How's your coffee? Mm. It's okay. I'm doing this bulletproof coffee with the butter Ooh. and the MCT oil. Yeah. But now it's gotten a little cold. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, it's a little bitter. I'm use, I mean, I use these organic Canadian beans. It's called Kicking Horse Coffee. If it's it's strong, okay. it's strong coffee, really. it'll it'll put hair on your chest. <laughs> yeah. I need some more hair on my chest. I week. I know. I know. <laughs> so. Um. But back to back to goals. So like, I think there's like five percent of the. Any, anyone in a profession or like an arena competing that where they just have like this well, they, they when they do what they do they just kind of enter flow right. right so they're they're in this like flow state when they're competing when they're doing business they just have a love for the game and I believe that like freedom is being in flow freedom is like so our brain, we've got three levels of brain. We've got like um, sort of lizard brain, fight, flight, and then you have monkey brain, which is more like, oh, I'm just, I just want to be happy. I just want to be comfortable. I, I want everything to stay the same. And then you have like higher self, right? So like three levels of mind. And, and, and in any given day, we go through fight, flight, monkey brain, higher self. So the reason for me saying that is like if you want to enter flow, you often have to go to like in, in your higher self. Where you're like, okay, I just, I just see the purpose with spending twelve hours a day campaigning to become the governor of California, or whatever. Right. It's just part of their flow. That's what they want to do. So, and those people are always untouchable in any industry, right? They're always like the best in the industry, right? Um, and and what I write about in Never Work Again is like, if you will never want to work again, it's about finding ways of getting into flow because that's where the magic is. And if you want to get into flow, you can't be worried. You can't be thinking about like, okay, who's going to do my accounting or who's going to do my legal work? Cause that ain't like for me that I can't, I don't get flow when I sit down with legal paperwork. It's just, for me, it's just like a nightmare. Right. Right. But right. Yeah. And, and the only way I think you can enter flow is you need to do something that is a little challenging, not overwhelming, but not boring, not yeah. not routine, and is interesting to you, right? Like, yeah. you know, doing accounting might be challenging for me, but it's not interesting. Right. Yeah. So. And then, like, you know, because, because we have, like, monkey lizard brain in that when we go outside our comfort circle, we're into, like, fear, slight little fear. Right. Um, a, like extreme fear or little fear. Um, I'm not sure I'm really speaking well English today. Um, is that like we quickly go into a lizard brain. We quickly go into monkey brain where we're just kind of like – so it's always – but you're right. It's like flow is oftentimes when you are challenged a little bit and then you really enjoy it because you're, like, you're experiencing all these new things and maybe you're having some aha moments. Right. Um, but again, like if you if you externalize your goals, if you externalize like like if you go on stage and you speak and you're like really worried about oh what do people think about me and what is the consequence of this and that's like lizard brain, right? Right. Uh, instead of like going like oh how can I just really really in the audience today like if I help these hundred people then life will be better for them. That's awesome, right? Right. Right. Um. So flow i love it i love it all right well erlen Baki, thanks so much for being on coffee talk listen if you're watching this you've got to get the book never work again so i don't know if erlen will give you a signed copy but where can you get the book erlen you can only get it on amazon.com or whatever amazon you might be at okay so amazon.com and look if you really want to take this to the next level, you've got to go to MrOutsource.com. I am currently using and loving and enjoying. It's 
I don't even know what the day is today because it doesn't matter. Today could be Monday, could be Sunday, could be Saturday. It doesn't matter for me, right? It's all the same because of MrOutsource.com. Like the kid, my kids asked me the other day, like, what, you know, Dad, what's the date today? I'm like, I don't know because <laughs> I don't need to know. So, um, you know, so it's just a, it's just a really great feeling of having a competent team in place. But I don't want to go on and on about it because I want to go on and on and on about it at, <laughs> at the appropriate time. So, um, but definitely go to MrOutsource.com. Erlen Baki, are we good? We are good, man. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks so much for uh, for being on Coffee Talk. And learn more at thelandgeek.com as well. Download for free the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes. And listen to Erlen and I on the Best Passive Income Model podcast, which will be delivered each week to your email inbox. Thank you, my friend. See everybody next time.